No, a watershed is not a small building you store water in. Actually, a watershed is an area of land from which all runoff drains, or sheds, to the same river, lake, or other body of water. The outlet of a watershed is its lowest point, typically within a stream channel, and often at a junction with a larger stream, river, lake, or bay. When precipitation falls into a watershed, some is stored within the watershed, some evaporates, and the rest follows the slope of the land to the watershed outlet. Water can move over the ground as surface runoff until it reaches a stream channel, where it continues its journey through the watershed as stream flow. However, some of the precipitation seeps into the ground and eventually makes its way to a stream channel by flowing through the ground below the surface. A watershed's boundaries are defined by ridges of relatively high terrain known as drainage divides. Water flows downhill from wherever it falls within a watershed, but the longest possible journeys begin at the highest elevations, just below a drainage divide. Watershed is a relative term with respect to drainage area. A watershed can drain an area as small as a few city blocks or as large as an extensive geographical region. Very large watersheds, which are often referred to as river basins, encompass a multitude of smaller watersheds and can drain large sections of continents. For example, Lena Gulch in the Rocky Mountain foothills drains only 14 square miles of land, but its water eventually combines with water from numerous other watersheds in the north central United States to form the Missouri River Basin. This basin encompasses all or parts of ten states. Where did the concept of a watershed as an environmental neighborhood come from and why is it important to us? Urbanization began in our country along the eastern seaboard where there is a temperate climate and plenty of precipitation throughout the year. Rivers were important for transportation but when people considered where they lived it generally was in terms of their town, county, or state. In many places, rivers marked political boundaries, but it was not until Easterners encountered the arid regions of the West in the 19th century when a more hydrologic concept of place emerged in the national dialogue. Can you guess which explorer conceived of this new idea, that a watershed should define where people live? Major John Wesley Powell lost his right arm in the Civil War. However, this did not prevent him from being the first Western explorer to navigate through the Grand Canyon, first in 1869 and again in 1871. Sitting in a chair strapped to his boat, the Emma Jean, Powell marveled at how the Colorado River formed this magnificent canyon. But it was in his explorations of the surrounding arid lands where he saw early pioneers dig ditches and collectively manage their water resources. The methods of these early pioneers were patterned after the Pueblo Indian and Hispanic communities that both collectively managed and shared their precious water resources. Powell conceived of and then argued for watersheds being the natural basis for organizing communities and the use of the land. Powell could not have imagined seeing the Grand Canyon for miles above the Earth's surface as we can now examine our natural environment, nor could he have foreseen the immense reservoir in the desert named after him and providing for the water needs of millions of people in Phoenix and other western cities. But he was able to recognize that watersheds are the basis of our natural environmental communities. While the grandeur of a Grand Canyon demonstrates the power of a major river like the Colorado, you really don't have to go far to see the vitality of a watershed. Look around, you are standing in one. Your own backyard is part of a watershed. Perhaps down the street there is a small creek or drainage ditch. That creek or drainage ditch will eventually lead to a larger stream, river, pond, or lake. This immediacy is a critical point for you to understand and convey to your broadcast audience. What happens in your backyard and in your neighbor's backyard affects your whole environmental neighborhood. To understand how, let's take a short hypothetical trip around a local watershed system. Imagine you live on Clear Creek. It's a pleasant stream that flows under roads and through parks in your neighborhood. Occasionally, kids will go for a plunge or try to catch frogs. Upstream is city-owned parkland with limited development. The smaller watersheds upstream, Babbling Brook and Cold Creek, 
are being preserved in their natural state. You don't worry much about problems with the water. But lately you have been hearing and reading about dangerous contaminants in the water. A note with your utility bill even warned against swimming and fishing in Blue Reservoir downstream from the city. At first you assume the creek is getting contaminated as it flows through the industrial part of town. But that's downstream from you, and now you learn that even in your neighborhood the water is far from pure. Numerous dead fish have been spotted floating down Clear Creek. What's happening? Well, there are several things going on. Those nice parklands upstream of you have their pit toilets located too close to the creeks, and they are not pumped out regularly. In addition, the roads up there were resurfaced earlier this year. With the heavy rains in recent weeks, contaminants from the roads and toilets are making their way to the creeks. As that water arrives into town with those contaminants, it encounters a whole array of new toxins. Oil and other petroleum products washed by the rains from driveways and parking lots find their way to the creek. The city received many complaints after the rains about the increase in mosquitoes. So the city did aerial spraying of insecticide. That's in the water now as well, and the effects on the aquatic ecosystem weren't limited to the mosquitoes. And all of those herbicides applied to keep the lawns weed-free are going with the flow too. In addition, those new children's play sets and fences by all the parks are made with treated wood that releases some of its chemicals to the rain and into the watershed. Yes, your pleasant little creek is quite a science experiment, and it hasn't even reached the industrial part of town where many more contaminants get washed into the clear creek watershed. These contaminants come from gas stations, factories, refineries, sewage treatment plants, and landfills. No wonder the water from Clear Creek has poisoned Blue Reservoir. Obviously, we can't eliminate all the sources of contaminants in a modern society, but we can be more careful about where we locate the sources of contaminants so that they may be contained more efficiently. We also need to make wise choices about using potentially hazardous materials within the watershed.